Pass it on. It's more than just a theme, clever marketing phrase, or cool pin design. It's a way of life for many American Legion Auxiliary members, units, and departments. The most important part about being an American Legion Auxiliary member is passing on our legacy of service, not self, to the next generation. Traveling around the country this past year, I really saw the need to rebuild our infrastructure so that we may continue our amazing work. I also understand now that the American Legion Auxiliary doesn't belong to us. We are only caretakers for the next generation. My story begins with you, the American Legion Auxiliary member. Last summer, when I was working with National Headquarters on my itineraries, I wanted the departments to dictate how we would spend my visit to their states. Their wise planning made every single department visit a memorable and moving experience. While I have hundreds of stories from my travels that I'd like to tell you about today, time allows me to focus on only a few. Since 1919, our veterans and service members have been a major focus of the American Legion Auxiliary. While in Oregon, I met a veteran named Steve who was living in a veteran's home. During the Auxiliary's visit to the home, this gentleman asked to meet me. I asked him when he served and he said he was drafted right after high school and served in Vietnam. His job was working in the morgue. There were too many dead bodies, he said to me, still visibly shaken after all these years. I asked that veteran when he graduated from high school, and he said 1965. I walked away and thought about that and realized that I had graduated in 1965. I thought about his life, and I thought about my life and what I've been given. The short conversation I shared with that Vietnam veteran is something I'll forever carry with me. I had the most amazing Veterans Day at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. I shared the day with a young woman named Ashlyn Haycock, who lost her military dad during a training mission when she was 10 years old, and her veteran mother who committed suicide when Ashlyn was 20. She is a staff member of the Tragedy Assistance Program for Survivors organization and does so much to help others. I know her parents were looking down on her that day and were so proud. She and I laid a wreath together at the Tomb of the Unknowns. What an honor for me. If you ask me which veteran related moment I remember most from my travels as national president, it's the Project SUDS program created less than a year ago in the Sunshine State of Florida. Every week, auxiliary members meet at a laundry center to wash the clothes of homeless veterans living in camps. Publicity from Project Suds has attracted many community residents, including non-members, to help with money, goods, and support. Talk about passing it on. Auxiliary units and members across the country can easily implement a Project Suds of their own or start an equally amazing mission-focused program to benefit homeless veterans. While in Florida, I was so impressed with the auxiliary members who came together from different units and connected with area dentists to provide free services for veterans in desperate need of dental work. Because of these auxiliary members' actions, several veterans have brighter smiles. I was so inspired at my visit to homeless veterans camps in Florida that I will be working with my congressman on starting a stand down in the Coachella Valley in California following my term as national president. As auxiliary members, we raise awareness about homeless veterans, but to actually see how these heroes live following their sacrifice to this country, well, it's time we start passing it on and helping them. In my action-packed visit to the Department of Maryland in February, I attended one of the most inspiring patriotic events during my national president's travels. 36 new citizens were sworn in during a ceremony at the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services, an event hosted by the American Legion Auxiliary. 
For some, naturalization was a process years in the making. I met one man who had been in America for 14 years. He was a teacher. He finally became a citizen and said, next year, I'm gonna run for office. That was so cool. As a first generation American, I thought this event was full of patriotism and Americanism, so much that it brought tears to my eyes since my grandparents became US citizens. I especially loved that the United States flags were provided to all people in the room. I've mentioned before that my journey with the American Legion Auxiliary started when I was just four days old. My parents passed on their values of patriotism and service to me. As members, we need to guide our juniors, mentor them, and involve them in our unit activities. Engage your younger members throughout their years as juniors and leave them with a big impression. The family that will continue to guide them into senior membership, the American Legion Auxiliary. By now you know that the American Legion Auxiliary members make a difference in their communities. Numerous departments and units held walk-run roles, events for veterans and their families, bringing new recognition to the American Legion Auxiliary's name within those communities. Approximately $58,000 was raised from these events to accomplish the goal of assisting our veterans and all the money stays within those communities. Thank you to everyone who participated. The American Legion Auxiliary is always ready and willing to make life better for those we serve. But in order to build our capacity to deliver our mission for the next generation, we need to increase our membership and be fully committed to the American Legion Auxiliary's four founding principles of justice, freedom, democracy, and loyalty. That's why I am so excited about our five-year centennial strategic plan. By 2019, the American Legion Auxiliary's one million members will be making a difference for veterans and their families in every neighborhood. Auxiliary departments will pass it on by implementing their own centennial plan. I can't talk about pass it on without mentioning acceptance. From knowledge to patriotism to the love and respect of each other, we cannot be a successful organization if we don't become more accepting of each other. The American Legion Auxiliary Girl State Program taught me about the importance of diversity and tolerance. Each year, nearly 16,000 young women attend a program that embraces the differences in all of us. It's time we all pass on that feeling to all of our members and those who would like to be part of what we do. Now, how can I talk about my term as national president without mentioning fun? I love that technology allowed me to Skype my welcome message to the Department of New York, and that the young women attending the California and Louisiana Girl State sessions were able to FaceTime a fun banter back and forth. I also love that social media can instantly take a special moment from an event and turn it into an unforgettable snapshot. Those who follow the National President's Facebook page know that I love to take selfies and post them online. Say cheese! In March, social media became queen of the ALA during the Auxiliary's annual Washington, D.C. conference. On the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, more than 200 American Legion Auxiliary members, joined by several Legionnaires and Sons of the American Legion, paid tribute to our armed forces with a flash mob of military anthems and other patriotic songs. The video was posted on the National Headquarters Facebook page and was seen by more than 30,000 people. I leave you today with a set of thank yous to some very special people. First, our veterans, the military, and their families, especially Sarah Smiley, whose inspirational book, Dinner with the Smileys, tells a story about how the community passed it on to help her military family. If it weren't for all these heroes and the people who stand by them, we couldn't enjoy the freedoms and peace that we have been given thanks to their sacrifices. I heard that firsthand while on my Far East and Normandy visits. 
The people of those faraway places thank me countless times about how much they appreciate the freedoms they enjoy today. A special thank you to my husband Jim, the first dude, for his love and continuous support. And thank you to the American Legion National Commander Dan Dellinger, his wife Margaret, and his aide, the second dude, Robert Renner, and the sons of the American Legion National Commander Joe Gladden and his wife Bobby. Once again, please remember that accepting each other, no matter our age, race, religion, or who we love, is so important. Acceptance is a big part of the American Legion Auxiliary survival. Thank you to all the American Legion family members and National Headquarters staff for everything you do to support the American Legion Auxiliary's mission. And please continue to pass it on.